Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank the Lord for each of you. Thank you for joining us and for participating with us in the reading of the word of the Lord. I pray that the Lord would just speak to us in and through his word, that he would minister to us and just share with us himself through his word. Today we're busy in the book of the Acts of the Apostles and we're going to be going through chapters 11 and 12. And as we get into chapter 11, we see that Peter now returns to Jerusalem and the Jews that have converted to Christianity now are speaking to him and they are contending with him actually because the Gentiles now receive the Holy Ghost. The Gentiles are now being baptized, but they didn't have to go through all of the processes that the Jews had to go through in their Judaism, if I can say it this way. So they were arguing about the circumcision and whether those people that were converted to Christianity first needed to be circumcised. And we can understand their contention because that was the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham and with the Abrahamic people. And now they are wondering whether they also need to do this to Christians that would come in. Remember, if proselytes came in, those people needed to be circumcised and follow the Jewish traditions. Now they are contending. And remember, the Jewish religion was a very works-based religion. And so they are looking at the Gentiles and putting those laws upon the Gentiles as well. And so Peter then starts contending with them and starts telling them about his vision and all of the things that the Lord had showed him in this vision that nothing is is common now. The Lord has cleansed. The Lord has made a way for the Gentiles to come in. So we do not have to put the burden of the law upon the Gentiles the same way that it was in the Old Testament to the Jews. And Peter explains that those people have received the Holy Ghost just like the disciples did on the day of Pentecost. And how then could he not allow them to be baptized if they had already received the Holy Ghost? And so he's, he's actually debating with them about the things that had occurred here and what the Lord is now allowing in the church. And then we read how Barnabas actually went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And once he had found Saul, he took him then with him to Antioch on a mission. And they were going and preaching the word of God in Antioch. And the Bible says that the people or the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So this is where that name Christian came about. Now remember, they weren't called by any denomination name. They weren't called by any sect or anything like that. They were called Christians because they behaved and they acted like and they lived a life that was pleasing to Christ. And this needs to be our stance as well, that we do not call ourselves by the name of our denomination or by the name of the sect that we belong to, we should call ourselves Christians because we should emulate Christ. And so we get to chapter 12, and as we get into chapter 12, we see that uh, now the government is working together with the people to try and eradicate the nation from these Christians, and we see how Herod even in killing James, the brother of John, he rallied the people up and got the people behind him and so he rallies to lock up and imprison the leaders of the Christian community. And so he gets to Peter and he locks Peter up and he sets four soldiers around him. And he wanted to reveal Peter to the people that Peter was locked up. And this was at the time of Easter. And so we see then that the church begin to pray for Peter and they pray without ceasing. I love that term, how it's written here. And so while they were praying and while Peter was locked up in prison, we see that an angel appears to Peter in the prison and the chains fall off his hands and the angel of the Lord leads him out of the prison there and tells him to, to arise and to leave quickly. And this was not an easy thing because Peter was in the innermost prison there and so he had to cross a couple of wards to get there and finally he gets to this iron gate and he didn't even know whether he was in a vision or whether this was really happening. But then the gate even opened on its own accord. And so Peter goes through and he travels to the house where the disciples were. The angel left him at that stage. And so he gets to Mary's house. And when he does, he knocks at the door and a lady comes out there and she's called Rhoda. And she knows it's Peter's voice. And she goes inside and she says, I hear Peter's voice standing at the gate. And they think she's mad, but he's calling out and knocking and trying to get their attention. And they were so astonished that they just leave him standing out there for a little while. 
But then they led him into the house and he tells them of the wondrous work that the Lord had done for him there. But Herod, furious that Peter had escaped, not knowing what to do and, and questioning the guards, he commanded to put them to death because they had let Peter escape and foiled his plans of political gain, if I can say that. But Herod, unperturbed in his mission for political gain, tries to exalt himself. And in that moment, he is smitten by the angel of the Lord because he didn't give the glory to God for Israel standing among other nations and their prosperity among other nations. And so the worms ate his body and he gave up the ghost. That's what it says there. It's, it's crazy. But this is really it. He didn't give the Lord the glory and he was ruling the people of the Lord. And the only reason the Lord didn't destroy Israel because, is because of the covenant he made with Israel. But Herod, being a vassal king, didn't understand all of this. And so when he tried to exalt himself there, he was smitten down. But we see that the word of the Lord continued to grow in Israel and amongst those nations and spreading out now to all the nations. We see Barnabas and Saul taking with them John Mark and fulfilling their ministry in other nations and converting people to the Lord. And this is a beautiful thing. This is where we're going to leave the reading for today. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 11. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning, and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descend, as it had been a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered, and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John, indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass, that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. 
And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Chapter 12 Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, <laughs> Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea, and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Zidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, <coughs> it, it is the voice of a god, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms, and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry, and took with them John, whose surname was Mark.